Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. Just when you get up to the speed you want to be driving, suddenly there's a speed bump. Don't you hate that? You suddenly have to slow down and ease over it, or else you didn't see it and you hit, a full, hit it full speed and endure the jarring bump and wonder what you just did to your car's alignment. This week we are discovering that some of the hazards on our roads can connect with Bible stories of times when people were on the road then as well. Today we want to look at St. Paul. He was on the road a lot as he went on three separate missionary journeys to spread the news about Jesus. But today we want to focus on the speed bump he hit when he was on the road to Damascus to arrest and persecute Christians. He was originally named Saul, and he was born to a devout Jewish family living in the city of Tarsus, a port city on the southern coast of Turkey. Since it was a port city, people from many lands came there on ships of trade, and some scholars speculate that that exposure to people from other lands contributed to Paul's openness to spreading the gospel to all people, not just to the Jews. His family was deeply religious like the Pharisees, seeking to live like the scriptures commanded. Perhaps of special note is that in the Romans, that in the book of Romans, Paul mentions that two of his relatives were Christians before he was, and that they were prominent among the early followers of Jesus. As a young man, he went to Jerusalem to study under a Pharisee named Gamaliel as he furthered his education. He probably stayed with family living in the area, and while he could speak Aramaic, most scholars believe his first language was Greek. His writings do indicate that he was familiar with various Greek philosophies. As he became more and more steeped in Jewish thought, he began persecuting those who were more open to other ways of thinking. Some believe this began with Greek-speaking Jews who had relocated to Jerusalem from other areas around the Mediterranean and who were more tolerant and open to worldly views. This would lead naturally to a focus on the Christians who had adopted this new religion. That's probably where most of us begin to know a little bit about Paul, or Saul, as his name was at that point. An early Christian named Stephen was stoned to death for preaching about Jesus. To devout Jews, Stephen's words would have been considered blasphemy, and so they stoned him to death. As he died, Stephen prayed that God would forgive those who were killing him. Saul was there watching over the coats of those who stoned Stephen to death. Perhaps his manner of death and his prayer had some influence on the young Saul also. Not long after that, Saul got permission to go to Damascus and to ferret out any Christians there and bring them back for trial to Jerusalem. On the way, on the road, however, he had a vision of the risen Jesus and Saul was changed. When the vision was over, Saul was left blind. It's an interesting twist. Before, he had refused to see the truth, and now he can't see anything at all. He sat in a house in Damascus, waiting for what was to come next, and God sent a believer named Ananias to welcome Saul into his new faith. I have to say that Ananias is one of my heroes. Imagine how fearful he must have been to go and present himself to this man who had been arresting and killing Christians. And yet still, Ananias went as God told him. While he was there, he laid hands on Saul, and something like scales fell from his eyes, and he could see again. Saul was baptized and began to follow Jesus with the same fervor with which he had previously had for Judaism. And to mark his new beginning, he gave himself a new name. 
He changed his name from Saul to Paul. I am not who I was, he was saying. I am a new person, made new in Christ Jesus. A few years later, he wrote some letters to the church in Corinth that he had founded, and perhaps his own experience was behind something he wrote to them. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, we read, So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Maybe we need a speed bump to jar us out of our complacent faith. Maybe the bump will shake the scales from our eyes so that we better see how we are living. The poor among us we have been ignoring. The outcast we don't welcome. Maybe it's time to take a new road. Maybe it's time to take the road with Jesus. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.